Good morning. Happy Saturday. What a beautiful day to be alive. Man, I am so jazzed. <laughs> hey, Denise. Hey, Ollie. How you doing? <laughs> no. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm coming to you live from Morrentown. Sun is out. The cats are out. <laughs> and it's a beautiful day. It is. And I am just, uh, I'm full of it. <laughs> I got a brand new fresh cup of pee. <laughs> I don't do morning tea. I do morning pee. Cheers. And I'm a pee factory. <laughs> hey, Glenn. Yeah, man, I tell you what. <clears throat> I've been pumping the pee lately. <laughs> oh, man. I, it just blows my mind. It really blows my mind. Because it doesn't matter anymore what I do. It just doesn't. <laughs> pee just keeps flowing. I put another gallon together last night. <clears throat> I think I'm up to 46 gallons. <laughs> it's awesome, man. I, I I got plans. I don't know what they're all going to be yet. <laughs> That's yet to be seen. But <laughs> I, I just keep storing it away. I got a warehouse of pee. <laughs> it works for me. And, uh, you know, if you don't have the product, what are you going to do? And that's the way I feel about it. You know, I was talking to Monica Shoot yesterday, <clears throat> and uh, I love Monica. Monica is just such a dear heart. She's such a dear friend. And uh, she has been one of my biggest cheerleaders from the minute I uh, first entered the group. Wiley Schmidt introduced me. And uh, so <clears throat> I brought uh, myself to uh, the forefront, I guess. I don't know. You know, Will Wiley said, uh, man, you know, I like your video. She should be in a group. And I'm going, group? <laughs> what group and uh you know all of a sudden i'm being introduced i think it was the um, urine therapy the natural remedy uh group was the first one and before i knew it i was in like several groups and monica just showed up and she was like dude you are awesome and i went wow really <laughs> Really? And she says, oh, man, you're the shit. And so we started a friendship early on. And uh, we were on the phone yesterday for a couple hours. And, you know, I just love Monica. She's she's a champion to me. I mean, she's one of the uh, hallmarks of uh, great wisdom. And she's been through a lot. And so <clears throat> I've got her coming on as a guest. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about it for a long time, planning it. So I finally pinned her down. Yeah, so she's going to be coming on in uh, April. And uh, I'm excited about that. Big time. And <clears throat> before I get in, I got some ideas today. I'm going to tell you some stories. Today I'm going to tell some stories. And... <clears throat> but I want to remind anybody who's interested, uh, just so I don't space that out. Um, I, I'm sending all my finals uh, to the publisher Monday. And that includes anybody who wants to make a donation um, <clears throat> to the PayPal account. If you want a signed, uh, personalized signed uh, numbered copy of the book, you can uh, donate $25 or more. Uh, to my paypal uh, dot me forward slash we do account and you will actually be in the book <laughs> under all the uh, beautiful people that uh, 
I want to acknowledge for supporting me in this process because it has been a process. And anybody who wants to also submit a comment, <clears throat> you got two days left to do it. And you can send that to my uh, we do shivambu at gmail. And if you get it in, uh, I can put it in and uh, I welcome it. So that being said, I want to tell you some stories. I'm going to talk about addiction today. Habits and addiction. Now, I started out early um, as a youngster on my addictions. Uh, I'd have to say sugar was my gateway, big time. And <clears throat> my mother, now I was the youngest of five boys. I came from a big family. My mother was feeding uh, six men, well, five boys and a husband. And so we bought a lot of food, lots of food. We'd buy food by the cases, tomatoes, oranges, apples, grapefruits, you know. We'd buy things by the cases. I mean, sugar came in <laughs> like 10-pound bags, <laughs> potatoes by the case, you know, all that. And uh, my mother, <laughs> God bless her soul, you know, she died at 93 a few years ago. And uh, she uh, wouldn't um, buy uh, sugar-coated cereals. And we had a lot of them. They were all being introduced. So she'd buy cornflakes, Cheerios, shredded wheat, those kind of things. And 10-pound bags of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> and then, man, I would take spoonfuls of that shit, man. Spoonfuls. Big time. And I would just pour it on, pour it on, pour it on. And uh, you get to the bottom of the bowl, and it was just this, like, <laughs> sugar mud. <laughs> yeah, drink that shit up. And uh, so, yeah, it, I, I really call it my gateway. It was my gateway drug. Um... It led me to a lot of things. Now, I grew up in a show business family. Uh, my father was a professional musician. Uh, at that time, when I was born, he was semi-professional. He was playing in bands, a band called the Continentals, actually. And they used to do a lot of jam sessions. Um, and so we had a lot of party in our house, big time, big time party. And... Um, I was just a youngster, a little guy. I mean, really a little guy. And, you know, there was just <clears throat> food, smoke, drink, this, that, and the other. It was just an atmosphere. It was a culture. And by the time I was eight, I'd already started smoking cigarettes. By the time I was, my, my guess is around 11 or so, I was already drinking alcohol. As a matter of fact, first time I got drunk, um, <clears throat> this was crazy. We went to Mexico when I was 11, and in addition to switchblades, fireworks, <laughs> and whatever other crazy shit we bought, um, <laughs> oh, my hooded pullover, it's all a uh, Zen Buddhist thing. It says, um, life is ironic. Um, it takes, it takes sadness to know what happiness is, noise to appreciate silence, and absence to value presence. There you go. <laughs> so anyway. Here, uh, we went to Mexico and bought all this crazy liquor, um, you know, uh, weird tobacco, liquor, you know, all this like, oh man, it was crazy shit. And so we had this cabinet in our house with all this goofy liquor. And I systematically, I took an empty bottle and I kept siphoning little by little, you know, I just kept mixing it. It was like, man, this was a scary bottle. <laughs> It was so full of shit. And uh, I'll never forget, I was like 12 by this time. 
and I had this bottle hidden under my bed. And <clears throat> one day I decided, okay, it's time. And so I kept pulling out the bottle, and I'd open it up, and I'd take a sip, and I'd go... <laughs> I was just like, whoa, this is nasty. And I'd cap it, and I'd put it back under the bed, and I'd lay there. And then a little while later, I'd go, open it up, drink another one, go through the same process. I did this for a while. I was fucked up. I was. I remember when I needed to finally get up and go pee. And I lived in the basement of this house. This is the house that burned down when I was 13. And there was this um, <clears throat> support beam, uh, uh, vertical, in the middle of the room. And it was raw. I mean, it wasn't like a uh, finished, I mean, this was an unfinished old farmhouse. <laughs> and I walked right into it, <laughs> smashed my head. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I made it upstairs to go pee, and uh, yeah, I fell down the stairs and everything. But this was my introduction to uh, what it is to ride that uh, wicked pony called alcohol, uh, alcoholism, and it just continued. It continued a lot. As a matter of fact, I can honestly say that uh, I spent a lifetime as an alcoholic. I did. And uh, it cost me. Uh, it cost me a lot of things. It never cost me a job, ironically. Um, it, you know, as a professional chef and working construction and all that shit, somehow it just all, nobody ever paid attention to that kind of shit. And, but I started smoking at eight, started drinking by 12. I was doing psychedelics and, uh, every kind of drug imaginable by 14. I was, uh, got first introduced to pot, then acid, mescaline, um, um, speed, uh, downers, um, all of it. Now, I didn't really care for most of it. I like psychedelics. I still like psychedelics, man. That's the opening of the uh, portal, if I ever seen. But... <clears throat> I mean, I got into coke a lot, and uh, I wasn't really like an addict. I just liked it, and um, I was in a culture where it was everywhere. It was just everywhere. I lived with this coke dealer when I was 17. He was in my house. We used to snort coke with $1,000 bills. They used to actually have $1,000 bills, and he always had them, and We'd be snorting coke with thousand dollar bills. And during this same period, not only was I snorting it, we got pharmaceutical cocaine. I was shooting that shit. I shot heroin. I only did that once. Didn't like it. So needles in my arm was kind of limited. Uh, but the psychedelics I liked. I liked it a lot. So, I'm going to continue this conversation because there's a lot of addictions. Lots of them. It's not just limited to drugs. Uh, that <laughs> Drugs are drugs. <clears throat> alcohol is alcohol. Cigarettes are cigarettes. Let's talk about deeper addictions. Sugar. Sugar and salt, these are big ones, man. These are the ones that really captivate people uh, beyond their uh, expectation. I mean, just look at all the sugary drinks, the, you know, the chips, the this, that, and the other. I mean, they put that shit in everything. And uh, people just don't even see it coming. They don't. I didn't. You know, I had no idea. And... <clears throat> Another big one for me was sex. I had my first sex when I was 13 with a 12-year-old. And this started another whole campaign. I went through a lifetime of these addictions, all of them. Salt, sugar, alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, sex. Rock and roll, party on, dude. <laughs> Ah! <laughs>
<laughs> you know, and, you know, it's just the uh, this is what I grew up in. This is the culture I grew up in. And so I didn't see anything about it. I didn't. It was just part of what we do, what we did. And it's, you know, but I can honestly say that uh, it led me astray on many levels, many levels. Now, like I said, it didn't disrupt any of my careers. Never. I never got fired because of drinking or drugs or smoking or attitude or any of that shit. I was fucking good at what I did. I did and I still am. Another addiction. Obsessive, compulsive behavior. Now, this stuff works good uh, in articulation when you're on purpose, uh, when you have an attention to detail, which I do. But it can get pushed over the edge. And it did. And I didn't recognize it until I started doing urine therapy. That's when I finally recognized this particular addiction as well and I was actually it just kind of twisted my melon it really did when I realized because I was doing the urine therapy and the body rubs and the enemas and ditomious earth and turpentine and all this shit and I was on my way to being a fruitarian and a breatharian and you know all these things it was like the new obsession it was like my new drug and that shit wasn't working. Didn't work. I hit a wall. Ah, man, I hit my I hit my head hard on that one. I really hit it hard. And <clears throat> once I realized what was happening, it actually was healthy. It was a good call. I started recognizing um, these traits. Now, I, when I went vegan, um, that was like, uh, shit, four years ago, I guess now. And I quit meat and dairy and seafood and alcohol. All within, um, I don't know, 10 days, two weeks, something like that. I just dropped them one by one. And I quit smoking um, about five months later. And then I continued that. But I want to tell you something. Last December, when I landed here in Missouri, you know, I'd gone, I was almost exactly two years on cigarettes, no smoking. And Daniel, bless his heart. I love Daniel. <laughs> you know, he was smoking. He was doing tobacco. He had a bag, you know, and he kept smoking in front of me. And this went on for a week or so. And I don't blame him. Believe me, I take full responsibility uh, for my activity always. But I said, fuck it. I did. And I pulled out a paper and twisted one up. And I knew if I smoked one, I'd smoke another. And I did. And I continued. And I'm still smoking. Uh, it's only a couple months now. But I'm going to quit soon. That is absolute. Because another whole thing has happened in my life. It's more important than anything. After almost, I don't know, 10 plus years of being abstinent and single, I have somebody in my life that's really important to me. Big time. Big time. And I'm not disclosing that because of a protection of privacy for both of us. <clears throat> You'll know. You know, you'll know. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I can say what I'm saying right now because it is uh, posture and disclosure and I exercise that privilege. But we're developing. We're growing. And smoking won't work. And I know it. I mean, it's not an absolute, but it just won't work. I don't care. You know, I'm not attached. It's been kind of a comfort. The thing about the addictions, I want to focus on this. Addictions are a comfort. They're like old friends. Addictions never abandon us. I'll guarantee you, smoking and drinking never abandoned me. Even when my relationships failed, 
when my friends left, when shit was falling apart around me. Smoking and drinking didn't leave me. It hung right by me, in a comfort zone, made me feel okay. It's like, you're okay, dude. You know, have a drink, have a smoke, twist one up, man, do a dub. You'll be okay. And honestly, I was. It was okay. It served me in a way that I, uh, you know, I accept. I accept the responsibility. Now, does it serve me now? Oh, that's a variable. That's questionable. Uh, but I'm okay. I'm okay. I am. You know, I'm not obsessed with what's going on in my life. I actually have never been healthier. I've never been happier. I'm on jazz all the time, man. My rhythms and rhymes are just tripping these days. So I accept. I receive the blessings. Every day I am just richly rewarded with blessings. My life is just a miracle. I can't even believe it some days. I just look at my life and I'm like, wow, what a trip. This is amazing. Now, importantly, I had, I had abstinence for over 10 years. And why? Because I really had a sex addiction. This was a problem. This interfered with every relationship that I ever had intimately. Because I was being led astray. Little Willie was running the show. You know, I figured as long as I had sex, I had love. <clears throat> wrong. Just wrong. And it became alienated, always endlessly no more that ain't gonna happen that's not happening that's just not happening I've learned through this 10 years I've learned I've learned some really important lessons and this was even before UT I learned some important lessons one is I am not my addictions there's somebody else living inside here and I pay attention more. Now, since UT, I pay attention a lot. I pay, I pay big time attention because I'm liquid now. I'm in total fluidity. I can feel it. Now, I posted some pictures this morning. People keep saying, hey, man, you know, why don't you show some pictures? Oh, I showed some pictures, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because somebody came in and comments and uh, said, I thought your first two pictures, you look healthier. <laughs> and I just had to laugh because, you know, I weighed 246 pounds, man. I looked pregnant. I mean, if you look at that shirt, which I I love that shirt. Just smoke it. <laughs> I found that at the Hemp Fest in Seattle. Uh, Seattle was the very uh, first and still, to my knowledge, the largest Hemp Fest um, in the whole world. I mean, it, it draws so many people as crazy. But I found two shirts uh, when I went there. Oh, this was like, I don't know, five, six years, six, six, seven years ago. I don't know, whenever it was. And I found these two shirts. That one. Just smoke it. <laughs> now, I can guarantee you that wasn't a uh, Nike uh, sanctioned proof shirt. You know, I knew that when I spotted it. I thought, oh, man, I got to get one of these. And uh, the other one uh, was a orange shirt, you know, with the black, you know, kind of like a construction worker shirt. <clears throat> and it said 420 safety meeting. <laughs> <laughs> now, anybody who's a pothead knows what that means, you know. And I thought, oh, perfect. <laughs> and I let go of those because they were both double X large shirts. And when I left Washington, 
uh, last September. I got rid of a lot of stuff, man. If it didn't fit in my van, it didn't fit in my plan. You know, that was the way it was. And clothes were a big part of that. Even though I had an attachment to the message and all that, um, didn't matter. I let go of a lot of things. I've let go of a lot of things. And I continue to do so. I trim tab my life. Constantly, I trim tab it. I minimalize it. I feng shui it. I just look at life in a way that... What is going to serve me in the highest good? What? No, I have no idea. You know, I'm not asking you. I don't need approval or permission from anybody. It's a... Uh, it's a self-perpetuating kind of uh, notion. But I'm cognizant. I am. Now, I, I yesterday, now, I like I said, I went vegan like, oh, shit, I'm going on four years ago. And I cut it, everything out. I just cut it out. But I realized there was a sense of denial involved. Especially when it went totally fruitarian. Totally. That was it. Just fruit. Man, I was buying masses of fruit. And I love fruit. I love vegetables. I love salads. I love these things. I do. I enjoy them. But I was a professional chef. And cooking was an art form. It was culinary arts. It was something that really appealed to me. And I realized that it wasn't serving me because I was in a sense of denial. And my compulsive, obsessive behaviors were blindsiding me. I was good to myself. And one day I woke up and I said, fuck it, man. Go cook some food. Go cook some food. And I did. <laughs> and I felt great. <laughs> felt really good, man, chopping and preparing and sautéing it up, making it up, yeah, and I felt good, felt really good, because it's just a part of who I am, it's what makes me, me, I have a lot of skills, I do, cooking's one of them, construction's another, filmmaking, these are all just you know, they're, they're skills. I And what I'm doing right now, these are skills I've worked at. Being present. Show business. Filmmaking. Production. These are all things that I'm comfortable with. That's why I do them these days. This is the thing that makes me feel good. Writing. Publishing. Producing. Makes me feel good. So why would I want to deny what makes me feel good? It's a good question. Everybody needs to ask this for themselves. That's why I never posture myself in a way that uh, puts me above anybody. I don't have a support uh, superiority complex by any stretch. But more importantly, I don't have an inferiority complex at all. I see us as equals. I really do. Regardless of where people are coming from, what they're doing, who they're being, I, we're all in this together. Now, some people go with the program. Some people don't. None of my business. I don't care. I really don't. I mean, I love everybody. I don't like everybody. Matter of fact, most people I don't like. Honestly. I don't care for their beliefs. I don't care for their practices, their attitudes, their behaviors. I don't care for it. But I never disrespect them, ever. I don't take away and strip people's honor and put myself above them like, you know, what the fuck are you doing and all that stuff. I treat everybody with respect. And why? Because I treat myself with respect. How can I be unconditional in loving everybody? Because I unconditionally love myself. And that is the clue. I took the cue. I decided, man, 
You're gooning yourself. You got to get the fuck out of your way. Just keep fucking up. You just keep fucking up. And why are you fucking up? Because I kept getting in my own way. That's all. So, what are you facing? Everybody has their own challenge. <clears throat> Everybody. <clears throat> Everybody's walking a walk. Everybody. I'm willing to deal with my own. It's not my business what other people are doing. Not my business. I have to be responsible for me. And I am. And things have been magical. UT opened the window. It opened the door. I have to be honest about that. I've done a lot of training. I've been a trainer, motivational speaker. I stood in front of tens of thousands of people, giving them inspiration and motivation and teaching and techniques and how to make their lives work. But, same time, I kept going to myself. Hmm, funny how it works, huh? And if you don't, you know, stop looking, listen, and question your own authenticity, your own integrity, um, you might want to, might want to check in. And that's what I realized. I realized it. I was a, a mic commander. There I am, man, rah rah rawing. Twenty thousand people in a coliseum, telling them how they can do it. And, you can make it happen and go, 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 diamond. And my life was falling fucking apart. It was. My marriage was just on the fucking brink. And she is my business partner. But I'm up there doing the ballyhoo, inspiring people. What a fucking joke. It was a joke. I had to stop. I couldn't do it anymore. I just couldn't do it. And that's why I choose to do what I do now. Because I ain't fucking playing games with anybody. I'm not. I couldn't be more transparent and more honest with you. I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. I just don't. I'm just doing the best I can. That's what I do every moment I breathe. And I like my life. I like what's happening. It's unfolding and presenting itself in ways that I imagined. Funny how it works. I imagined it. I'm where I am supposed to be. <clears throat> I'm in a point where I'm going to have an experience and relationship that I've been planning on and dreaming about my entire life. Everything else was just an exercise. And I realize that now. When I look at all my, uh, my catalog, and I have catalogs. Man, I have archives that you have no idea about. I've been doing this shit a long time. I save everything. I have every letter, every card, every note, every photo. And I have it organized. It's chronological. I have them in notebooks. Girls. <clears throat> Poems. You know, family. This, that, and the other. Man, my life is really trim tab. It is. And I'm going to go retrieve... <clears throat> all my archives, my mainframe computer. I'm going to do this soon. Um, I just talked to Daniel um, this morning, um, and he's on a uh, he's on a pretty cool journey himself. And uh, I'm not going to leave until um, he returns from his journeys, uh, because uh, we got cats. <laughs> Baba and Muji. <laughs> and I don't really want to take them on a 5,000 mile road trip. And so, you know, I asked him, I said, you know, hey man, um, 
you know, what do you think that you can like come back and hang, you know, and hang with the uh, crazy crack cat cats. <laughs> They are, and they're hilarious, man. These cats are the, these cats are too funny. So I'm patient. I am. I'm patiently waiting to have the love of my life uh, walk into my life. And we've been conversing for months. And it's a beautiful um, symbiotic journey. Now, this is really new to me really new because I've taken the time I didn't let little Willie run the show this time <clears throat> being impetuous over ambitious you know driven by uh, sex it's not about that not about that at all it's about going to the higher level it's about the higher plane and we are mutually experiencing that. And it is awesome. Really awesome. Our conversations are poetic. It makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. I've been waiting for this person my whole life and I realize it. And I've been abstinent for over 10 years. Can I wait a little longer? I can wait a long time. As a matter of fact, had she not appeared in my life, I would have just continued doing what I'm doing anyway because you know what? I learned to love myself. I learned to respect and honor myself. And again, you're in therapy, open doors and windows that I just didn't see coming. I didn't. My heart, my heart is so open these days, it's just mind-boggling to me. I have so much uh, more empathy, sincerely. I'm really moved by people. I really am. And I have the privilege of having people reach out to me in ways that <clears throat> I only dreamed about. Because I really just want to give people a hug. You know, let them know they're loved. That's what I really want. And I really do believe that's where everybody's at. Everybody. Regardless of how big and burly and bullying, you know, and fucked up and confused and twisted and belligerent and arrogant and all that shit is a smokescreen. It's a mask. Because they're too afraid to expose that raw nerve, their damaged goods. Now, I know I was one of them. You know, I think everybody is. I really honestly believe that. We're all damaged goods. Now, uh, are we just going to drop that on the bill of lading? Leave it on the uh, the dock? Have some numb nut sign it off and walk away? That's an option. It happens all the time. You open up the case and you go, oh, fuck. I just signed up for this shit. I signed for this. These are damaged goods. It happens. It's happened to me over and over and over. And I arrived the same way. It wasn't like I was just accepting damaged goods. Other people were accepting damaged goods when they signed the bill of lading for me to arrive on the dock, too. I accept that responsibility. And I ask for forgiveness. I really do. I fucked up more than once. Hmm. I got a catalog called Fuck Up. Big one. But I don't dwell on it. I don't. That was somebody I used to know. I do the best way I know how anymore to be accountable, to be present, to be authentic, genuine, come from the heart, and be available. 
and I am available. I can't even go online anymore without people coming at me. And I accept them. I do. And they know. I've made a lot of friends, um, particularly like in India and Africa. That's a 12-hour time differential. And I go online. They're like, oh, he's online. Just like that. And they start PMing me. What's up in me? You know, like, you know, they're just like, wow. Dude, <laughs> there you are. Hi, 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 hi. And I'm honored. I am. Now, I don't always have the time. I don't. And I make that clear. I'm a very clear communicator. Always. Now, I ain't blowing any smoke up anybody's ass. You know, I ain't trying to frill your little dress. I'm not doing that. I'll be straightforward with you always, 100%. You can count on it. Always. That's how I roll. Now, I had an experience this week where, you know, this uh, person got really rude. <laughs> Funny, his name was Rudy. <laughs> that shit cracked me up. You're living up to your name, dude. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, and I gave him for a fair warning. I mean, I kept addressing him with love and respect and honor. I did. I kept readdressing him. And I said, dude, you're not getting this. You're just not getting this. You know, your behavior is just, uh, it's not acceptable. And this is your last warning. You get with the fucking program or get the fuck out. And if you're not going to excuse yourself, hey, guess what? I'll be the bouncer. I'll show you the way to the fucking exit. And why do I do that? Because I love everybody. And I didn't rob him of his dignity. I didn't strip him of any respect. I just told him the truth. But I created the High Vibe Tribe for a High Vibe reason. I want people to feel safe at home. I want them to show up and show their love. I want them to share their gifts and not be afraid by some fucking idiot. And I've had to excuse a couple of people this way. Their prerogative. I give everybody respect and fair warning always. But I honor the tribe. And not just the high vibe tribe. I honor all the fucking tribes. All of them. If I see that shit in other uh, groups, man, I'll jump on it. Every time. It's like, what the fuck? What are you doing? Everybody deserves love, man. Everybody deserves it. They all deserve it. Everybody does. Even the idiots. Even the ones that are just have their fucking heads up their ass. They're more wounded than you realize. They are. And they're used to being beat up, man. They're just used to it. That's what they're looking for. They're just looking for another sock in the jaw. <clears throat> That way they can rationalize and justify their anger, their violence, their indifference. They're looking for validation. And when you don't give them that validation, man, you want to twist their melon? Give that one on. Try that one on for size. Look at them with pure love. Don't judge them. Don't slug them. Don't debate them. Don't respond in anger. Don't do that stuff. Just look at them with love. Ask them. Just ask them. Man, you look like you're really angry. Why? What happened? What happened to you? Something happened to everybody. Some people have worked at it. Some people ignore it. Some people deny it. 
but the more clear you become, the more you recognize it, the more you love yourself, the more you have the space to love others. It just works like that. And if you're walking around wounded and fucked up and uh, judgmental and passing judgment and doing all that shit, man, <clears throat> you might want to ask yourself why. Why are you going there? How's it serving you? Is it working for you? Are you getting what you want? Are people, you know, really responding to you and are they loving you more? Are they? It's a good question. I think everybody has to ask this question to themselves. Everyone. You can't give what you haven't got. If you aren't being real with yourself, you will always be bullshitting everybody else. It's just how it works, man. It's the deal. And that's a tough pill to swallow. Oh, shit, you took both pills? What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Did you do it with Kool-Aid? <laughs> you know, I mean, it, 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 here's the thing. If you aren't having fun, if you don't realize you're just a fucking cartoon... Hey, man, laugh at yourself or somebody else will. And if you can't do it, just give me a call. I'll come and fucking laugh at you, too. I've learned to laugh at myself. I mean, I'm a cartoon. Big time. I learned that a long time ago. I'm a, I'm a fucking cartoon. But I'm okay with the cartoon that I am. It's an authentic cartoon. I like animation. I do. And I think all people... <clears throat> our cartoons. It's the way I look at life. People ask me, how's your day going? Oh, marvelous. And they're like, marvelous? Marvelous? I say, yeah. I say, marvelous. Why? Well, marvel. Yeah. You ever heard of the cartoon? You know, you ever heard of the uh, comic book? Marvel Comics. It's all animated. It's all cartoons. There's a root word for you. Marvel. And I marvel at everything. So, hence, marvelous. And it is. It's all marvelous, man. It's a big cartoon. That's why I call this Saturday Morning Cartoons, because it's just a cartoon. It is. I recognize I'm a cartoon. I do. I don't want anybody, like, putting me on a pedestal, following me around, acting like I am some superiority. I'm, that's all bullshit. That is so far from the truth, man. I live in a trailer. I shit in an outhouse. I go and dump kitty litter and get gasoline, buy water by the gallons. I have got no platform that gives me any precedence over anybody. I'm a human being. And I do the best I can every day. That's what I am about. I just do the best I can every day. I show up. I make myself available, accountable. That's what I do. Why? I consider it a responsibility. I think more people should really look at, <clears throat> you know, their uh, contract. <clears throat> Nobody comes with a guarantee or warranty, but we all came in with a contract. We signed up for this shit. We all did. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Not at all. We signed up for it. So, what's your contract? What's your purpose? What's your mission? What gets you going? You know, what makes you happy? 
See, most people are paying attention and, and focusing on what pisses them off. What makes them all goofy. All that fear-based consciousness. They're not paying attention to what makes them happy. They're not. Look around. It's really, it's, a, it's kind of sad. It is. Can you imagine living in a world where people were not competing against each other? They were actually cooperating, loving themselves and loving each other? Wow. People think that's pretty Pollyanna. They think that is just like, maybe he took too many drugs. I don't think so. I call it the paradigm shift. It's a raising of consciousness. And until consciousness raising uh, happens, there's no evolution. The evolution is the revolution. And it doesn't involve violence. It doesn't involve judgment. It doesn't involve these things. It's not a competition. What team you're rooting for. Yeah, I like the home team myself. I honor the tribe. I do. I think there is just so much glory, hope, promise. I really do. <clears throat> if I didn't think that stuff, if I didn't own that stuff, I'd just go ahead and check out of this fucking flea bag hotel. Call it fucking quits. But that's not where I'm at. It's not where I'm at at all. I really do inspire every day with the glory of goodness and the understanding that it is happening. We are evolving. This shit is for real. It's evolving. And I have seen more evolution from people that drink pee, really honestly, than anybody else. Not to discount anybody, because there's a lot of people that are on beautiful paths. You know, I have some really awesome vegan friends, fruitarian friends. I do. I have lots of friends all over, all over the world. And they're cute, adorable, creative, spontaneous. They're lovely. I just enjoy them. But the pee drinkers? Phew, another dimensional. I don't know why. I, you know, I mean, I well, maybe I do. I, I see what happened to me. And I can see that transparently in the others. I see it. It's really effortless to see it once you understand it, once you own it, once you're being it. It's pretty hard to miss. And I, uh, when I went to the symposium last year, that shit was for real. That shit was for real. You know, and who knew? I, I you know, who knew? You know, a whole room full of strangers. But before that weekend was over, we weren't strangers anymore, by any stretch. I have friends for life, totally. And, you know, I appreciate the groups. I appreciate all my uh, supporters on, um, you know, I love it. I mean, as a matter of fact, I think by the end of the day or the weekend, I think I'm going to hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> Who would have known? I mean, you know, wow, that blows my mind. And I didn't do the YouTube to make money. It's not like, I, you know, well, that'd be great and all that shit. But I'm a marketer. I know how to do sales. I'm a training expert. I know how to do this shit big time. Now, if I wanted to turn Facebook and YouTube into money made, you know, making, man, I could do that shit in the blink of an eye. 
if I wanted to do that, why would I choose urine therapy? Huh? <laughs> why would I choose that, man? Don't you know you'll never make any fucking money in urine therapy? Yeah, I do. I know that. And if I do, great. You know, I'm not saying that it's not possible, that it might, you know, who knows? The evolution is here and we're a part of it. It's happening. It is. It's expanding and growing continuously. And it's seemingly effortless. Exponentially, it's just exploding these days. Amazing. And I'm glad to be a part of it. I recognize my responsibility. Know that. I do. I put myself out there. I do. My head's on the chopping block every fucking day. Just waiting for somebody to swing a bat at it. Or an axe. But I have no fear. Zero. I have no fear. Is that all you got? You want to bring something else? I'm not very easily intimidated. At all. Nor do I want to posture myself in that way. Because... You want to see an intimidating motherfucker? I can show you intimidating. I know how to do that. I can pull that card and play the anger, and I'm a pretty good fucking actor if I really want to pull the card. I can get up in somebody's face so fast they wouldn't even know what was coming. But I choose not to do that. I've done that. I've been there. I know that one. But I just choose to look at people with love. That's what I choose. I don't want to wound anybody anymore. No one. I am not going to inflict the wounds on anyone. Ever. But you know, like I said, somebody wants to play that game, pull that card, you know. You want to see a mirror? You want to see what an asshole you're being? You want to see how fucking ugly you look? Go ahead and ask me twice to pull the card. I'll step up and look in your eyes and show you a mirror that'll freak you out. It's just an act. It's not who I really am. It's just not. It's not how I really feel. But, ha, ha, I'm a performer. I'm an entertainer. I know how to play the game. And I'm not playing games with you here. Now, the one thing I've learned about cartoons, they can be fun and games. They can be, uh, you know, Tom and Jerry and Waskwe Wabbits. And, uh, you know, they can be uh, scary monsters. That's what makes them cartoons. Uh, Denise has a question. Yeah. You want to see my hair take it out of the ponytail? <laughs> well, it'll just be all bunchy. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> That's hilarious. You really want me to do that, Denise? Why? You saw my hair several ways. You know, I've actually been enjoying just pulling my hair back. And a lot of it is just because I'm golfing and walking. And, you know, there's a lot of wind out here and stuff. And so I've just been doing the ponytail lately. And I've had, I have in my archives, I have three. I didn't save all of them. But I have three uh, protected uh, ponytails. You know, dipped in rubber. I mean, hair doesn't go away, man. You want to talk about protein. That shit doesn't go away. They're as protected and preserved as um, from the day I cut them off. They haven't deteriorated. You know, you look at here. Let's go into that. Let's talk about protein, okay? Because there's a mythical bunch of shit. Oh, I need meat for my protein. Protein. What are you doing for your protein? Morning, you know, protein, protein, protein. You know what? Your body produces protein. Just like magnesium, calcium. 
it produces all of these things naturally, effortlessly, continuously. And when you loop your pee, guess what? You just keep pumping that shit back in. We're miracle machinery. We are. I'll drink to that. Our bodies were designed perfectly. Perfectly. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Brian. Uh, I'm going to read a couple of these comments now. You know, I've been, I've been on a roll. You may have noticed. <laughs> I'm having fun this morning. And yes, I already have some of my quotes on uh, t-shirts. And uh, soon enough, um, I, I'm getting past, uh, first things first, just so you all know, the book, that's what's happening. Right now, the book's happening. Once I get the book, this is first book, sophomoric. And I'm excited. I've been writing for decades. I've been writing for over 50 years. I got the archives to prove that. I get this book out, and I've got other books in mind. I've got a plan. I do. But getting this book done and out and in operation, and I did all the editing myself. My uh, coordinator told me, dude, you did a really good job. Thank you. And... I was a high school dropout. I failed year after year. I had to do summer school every single year. Just in order to bullshit my way to the next grade. And when I dropped out of high school, I was three credits shy of having a graduation. And you know what? I didn't give a fuck. I didn't care. I can read my early report cards from grade school, even grade school and junior high. A couple of them made it through the house fire for some amazing reason, and I have them. Oh, Casey's a daydreamer. He just doesn't want to knuckle down. He doesn't pay attention. He thinks school is just a social event. And when I read those things... I go, good for fucking you, bro. You didn't buy that one. And I realize it now. I thought I was a failure. I thought I was just fucking ridiculously stupid, honestly, for years. And I was dyslexic, and I still am. But I work at it. I work through it. One day at a time, I work through this shit. Now, this is something I really want to point out. I still, by definition, could not tell you what the difference is between a verb, a noun, a pronoun, at all. I couldn't tell you the difference. Man, I failed over and over. That's some shit I just never got. But I trained myself. I learned how to get past my dyslexia because I knew that when I wrote shit down, it didn't make any sense. I'd look at the word and I would do everything phonetically. And then I'd look in the dictionary. I couldn't find the word at all because I was so off pace. <laughs> but I got over it. This is the key. This is the clue. I'll tell you another story and this one's important. I I felt like, with all the writing I was doing, this was in uh, 1977, okay? I was all of 24 years old at this point, and I'd uh, already been chefing in New York and Los Angeles, had an executive chef job at 23 in Los Angeles, big time, uh, a, a restaurant that uh, there was no prices on the menu, if you had to question the prices, you had no business being there. It was owned and operated. This restaurant was um, financially owned. 
uh, by a guy named Neil Bogart. Neil Bogart owned Casablanca Records. Casablanca Records was producing Donna Summers, Giorgio, and a lot of other artists. This dude had a lot of money. He drove an antique Bentley. And his managing business partners were Ron Kreitzman and Roy Silver. Roy Silver was a personal manager in show business. He had people like Bill Cosby and Tiny Tim and others. Ron Kreisman was a uh, record uh, executive, worked for Columbia Records, so it was a powerhouse. The um, Our hostess was uh, Mitzi Davis, Miles Davis's first wife, who was on the cover of one of his albums. This is where I was the head chef at 23 years old. I designed it. I created it. I hired all the people. Now I was running this shit, 23 years old. Think anybody give a shit if I knew what the difference between a verb and a noun was? Nobody ever asked me for my high school diploma. Never. But I, I was like, I moved back to Seattle. I didn't like LA. I moved back from Seattle, to Seattle. And I got, you know, I was there, executive chefing there. But when I first got back, I um, I signed up at the University of Washington for adult extension classes. Now, I was do it, it, that was the first video class I ever did. That was the first time I signed up for a video class. And we were hauling around porta packs that weighed... Uh, Man, it was like putting 50 pounds on your back because of the battery packs and shit. You usually had to pull it along on a little cart. And it had these big, thick cables and stuff. And the cameras were huge. That's how you produced video. This was 1977. I also took basic English. Because I was pretty frustrated that I couldn't figure this shit out. I couldn't understand basic fucking English. And it wasn't working. I still wasn't getting it. For whatever reason, I wasn't getting it. But this one night, I'm on the bus. And my instructor happened to be on the same bus. There's a crowded bus. We were on strap hangers and standing. And I said to her, you know what? I just am, I'm not getting it. I don't know why. I don't know why I don't get this shit. And she told me a story that changed my life. She said, <clears throat> in addition to doing this, I'm a book editor. It's what I actually do. I'm a book editor. And I have authors coming at me from every direction, from every field. If you actually read their manuscripts, you would think they were illiterate. But what they had to say was valuable and important. And that's why they hire me. I put the, you know, the dots and the T's and the punctuations. I That's what I do. I make it all you know, fit into the format so it can be published and look like they're not fucking idiots. But me, that's just me. I'm a mechanical. I don't have, I don't have those kind of creative thoughts. I don't. That shit changed my life. That conversation changed my life. She gave me hope. She inspired me. Big time. Don't give up. Man, don't give up. Keep writing. Keep doing what you're doing, man. It'll all work out. So I did. I have. I do. But in the process of doing this book, I was the editor. I had to edit it myself. I didn't have the money to hire an editor. I didn't. And I went through it with a fine-tooth comb. And my coordinator, when I talked to her the other day, she said, good job, dude. 
you know. I mean, it reads really good. I went, cool. Ha <laughs> ha! Right on! <laughs> so, you know, the reason I'm telling you these stories is whatever your gift is, enjoy it. Share it. Be it. Do it. Just do it. We all have gifts. Every one of us has gifts. Identify yours. Share it. Don't hide out in it. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be too shy of it. Don't don't live in denial. Don't go there. Don't do that. Accept yourself, your beautiful self. Understand and recognize the gift that you are. And share it. It's the only way anybody's going to know your authenticity. Keep hiding out. Keep playing games. You know, looking for uh, some protection, you know, from the big bad boogeyman. That shit lives in your brain. That's where it lives. The scariest monster you're ever going to face is you. Always. Always. We are the prisoners of our own demise. We're the jailers and we're the prisoners. And we do have the key to set ourselves free. Everybody. Everyone. No one's been excluded from this. No one. Everyone has the gift. Dig it. Enjoy it. Spread it around. Share it with others. <clears throat> They'll be glad you did. And the ones that don't, fuck them. Anybody who tells you you can't sing or can't dance... Just say, fuck you, step back and watch me. I'll show you a fucking dance and song routine. I'll never forget this one interview that Bob Dylan did. And they said, you know, uh, well, what do you consider yourself? A folk singer, you know, a rock and roll star, you know. I mean, this was a question from a journalist. And his answer was... Well, I kind of liken myself to a song and dance man. <laughs> I always loved that answer. I thought, you go, bro. <laughs> because that's the truth. You know, we're all that. Everybody is that. Now, I see Ryan is here. You know, Now, Ryan and I yesterday celebrated one year of our uh, friendship on uh, Facebook. And over the last couple of months, we've had these just illuminated conversations. Now, this brother has a beautiful, supportive, loving wife, seven children. And he's a brilliant artist. Brilliant. And he has a show. He has a channel. It's called Lucid Paints. Now, this guy is Bob Ross on fucking steroids, man. He shows you every trick in the book on how to make beautiful paintings with spray paint. I mean, beautiful paintings, his techniques, and he works at it every day. This is an artist who practices, practices, and practices and illustrates his craft. He shows you his techniques. He explains them. That's a gift. And I encourage everybody to do the same. You know, why hide out? Why hold back? What are you afraid of? What are you ashamed of? Everybody's got a gift. Everybody. It doesn't matter what it is. Your gift may be, be uh, you know, you wash dishes or do laundry better than anybody. You have the cleanest house in the world. Own it. Honor it. You know? Oh, you ought to see how I mow my lawn or raise my roses. Doesn't matter. It's all a gift. It's all a gift. Show up and beautify the world that you live in. Be the gift. Always. Why not? You know, why not? Everybody's got it. Everybody. They're just... uh afraid so many people are just afraid of showing who they truly are they're just afraid because somebody shut them down at some point and that's just a shame and i know i was shut down 
You know, I just never, I grew up around brothers who were really fucking disciplined, really talented. I mean, excelled in ways that were just beyond my comprehension, quite frankly. And so, um, no matter how hard I tried, it just didn't matter. I mean, I played trumpet, saxophone, guitar. I, I was doing summer stock at 12 years old. I was doing all these things in emulation because I was inspired by my brothers. But I kept falling short. I just didn't think I was good enough. That's why I was so easily led into addiction, which was the whole beginning of this program and how it led me astray. Now, I exercised it. I, you know, I'm a culinary artist. I acknowledge that. You know, I excelled regardless of my drug and sex and addictions, my alcoholism. I excelled. But I take a lot more responsibility for who I am now than I ever did in my entire life. And I'm a happy camper. I am. Ha! Ah, I am. Everything I imagine is uh, actualizing. Because I don't goon myself anymore. I don't sabotage myself anymore. I put in the order and uh, I have the patience, the love, the acceptance, and the understanding. It's all good. It's all in time. Just get the fuck out of your own way, bro. Don't goon yourself. Don't sabotage yourself. Own the shit. Be present and accountable. So I own that shit. I do. Every day, in every way, always. Period. I, I, I know the difference. Didn't work for me. I didn't realize it. That's why I just kept drinking. Drinking was just an easy way out. It's just a really easy way out, quite frankly. I'd have my morning coffee and my morning doobie, and I'd be right on to screwdrivers, and before late, you know, then I'd be on to beer, and, you know, whatever. That was my day every day, every day, every day, forever, decades. Now I go work my ass off, construction, cooking, didn't matter. I could do that shit. I could hold up my end of the deal. I wouldn't show up stumbly, slobbery, drunk. I mean, that wasn't me. It was just the fuel I chose because I was in a lot of pain. I was in a lot of physical pain. But that, fed, that, that, that really actually fed a lot of emotional pain, a lot of denial. And so I enabled myself to be crippled uh, because of all that. I, you know, I, um, it's my own results. I produce the results. I don't blame anybody. I attempted to do that shit. I t attempted to uh, point a lot of fingers, you know, my failed relationships, you know, my fuck you attitudes. It was all bullshit. It's just bullshit. There was nobody to blame but me. I was my own shortcoming. <clears throat> and I still am. I don't put myself in a posture above or below anybody. If anything, I just want to walk hand in hand equally. You know, I accept people. I adore people. I enjoy people. I embrace them. I'm grateful to have people in my life. I really am. I was a lonely motherfucker. I really was. Living in my own private Idaho forever. Forever. And you're in therapy changed all that. It opened up windows. I don't feel strange anymore. Well, I do. You know, I like the weirdos, you know. It says so right on the top of the frame of the High Vibe Tribe. Pretty much explains that I'm all those things. But I found my tribe, you see. I found the people that were um, resonating at the same vibration level. I found them. And who would have guessed? Drink and pee? <laughs> fuck me, are you shitting me? You know, <clears throat> this is how I was going to find my tribe because people were drinking their fucking pee? Who knew? Who knew? I had no idea. No idea. But I am grateful. I am. I've never been happier. I've never been healthier. 
I've never felt more loved. I've never had the opportunity to give more love and have that love received than I do now. Ever. Ever. And it's not just a uh, convenience because we work together. We're associates. We're family. You know, all those other misnomers of why we know people. Most people, we don't know at all. We don't. You know, we call them relationships and we don't relate. And if you don't relate, what do you have any business calling it a relationship for? And I don't care if you're poking that pony or just because your blood relationship is bullshit. It's just bullshit. If you don't relate, you don't relate. Period. That's what relationship is built on. Relating. Communicating. Honoring. Respecting. Accepting, allowance, trust, faith. That's what it's built on. If it's missing some of these ingredients, you might want to look at the relationship. If it's just a good roll in the hay, hey, you can get a hooker for that shit. Okay? That's the way it rolls. And I say that metaphorically. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean the hokey pokey. It's a metaphorical uh, equation on this one look at it look at your own life is it working for you hey if it's working for you awesome good for you cheerio but if it isn't if it's falling short you don't feel good it's not working yeah you, know, you might want to look in the mirror and see what the fuck ha what happened what went wrong where did you go astray? Who crushed you and put you in some sense of denial that you just decided you ain't going to show up 100% accountable? What happened? It's just a question. Something that everyone has to ask themselves. Don't go around asking other people. Ask yourself. You understand this shit in yourself, you'll understand it in other people. Ah, uh, big time. Can't give what you haven't got. Once you recognize it in yourself, you'll recognize it in other people, and that's where empathy really lives. That's where it comes from. Because then you now have the space to include the wounded, and we're all wounded. I guarantee you. Some people just protect it better mask it off better, deny it more. Somehow, after we came out in this perfect, supple, embryonic journey, in the womb, surrounded by pee and love, plasma ultra filtre, we came out these soft, supple, all-knowing, beautiful beings. All of us. Then what the fuck happened after that? What happened? Seven billion people, seven billion stories. That's what happened. How do you change it? I don't know. What are you doing? I know I'm doing the best I can. That's all I can ever claim. I live in the four agreements. I'm impeccable with my word. I ain't bullshitting anybody. I'm straightforward. Ask me anything. I'll tell you the truth. Period. I don't take it personally. I don't assume anything about anybody. And I do the best I can every day in every way and that I can live with I can live with those agreements I can live with that understanding every day in every way I can I can own that shit no-brainer so ha am I having fun yet yeah big time fun. 
my life actually works. For the, you know, I mean, finally, finally, I'm not good to myself. My life actually works. What I imagine, what I think about, it comes about. Every aspect, always. And I have the patience to allow it to present itself. That's why I'm very patient about everything. And I couldn't be more excited about, um, you know, sharing, sharing who I really have a glean in my eye about. But I protect our privacy. It's all timing. But it's happening. It is. And when uh, we are ready to present ourselves, you'll be the first to know. And it'll happen. And it'll fucking blow your mind. <laughs> it's already blowing mine. <laughs> this is someone I've waited for my whole life. And I realize it. I've waited for this person my whole life. And we deserve each other. We've earned each other's respect. We've earned each other's trust. And we adore each other. And it's clear. And I am grateful. I am. This is somebody I really, really adore. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Everybody deserves love, man. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, have I mixed alcohol with pee? Yeah. You know, recently I've had brandy. I drink that shit anyway. When I started drinking my pee, I was on meds. Handfuls of them. Lots of meds. I drank it anyway. You know what I've done from the beginning? I've drank my pee. Endlessly. Absolutely. And I don't want to use religiously, but you get where I'm coming from. I never vary. I just don't vary. I drink my pee every day. Every day I drink my pee. And lots of it. And I piss a lot. I can run up a gallon a day in storage. I'm up to like four. I put another gallon under into the storage. I think I'm at 46 gallons of aging right now 46 gallons I have a plan for all that big time that stuff is gold precious gold I know it there's no question in my mind the value of that pea <laughs> when I was talking to Monica shoot yesterday I said Hey, darling, dude, I'm up to like 45 gallons aging. She goes, get the fuck out of here. I said, yeah, man. <laughs> it's happening. And I'm going to do things like Glenn. Uh, you know, I've got a plan. I'm going to be doing things like Rosalind. I'm going to be doing a lot of different things. I'm just wanting to age it right now. That's my number one focus. I want it to build in its stem cell enzyme. I just want it to sit there and keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. It ain't going nowhere. It's not going to get, you know, bacteria. If anything, it'll ferment. It'll just become, uh, you know, tea. It'll become wine. It'll never go bad. Never. Never. Ha <laughs> ha. It'll just get better and better. Ha <laughs> ha. I assure you that. So I'm excited about that. Big time. Big time. I am a pea factory. I am. It's amazing to me. I don't guzzle tons of water or any of that shit. I don't do that. It just multiplies. My body is just an efficient machine. I'm a trimmed down 165. No love handles. No pot belly. No excess in my neck. No fat jowls. None of that shit, man. I'm trim lined. Why? P. That shit didn't happen when I was vegan. I still had the belly. I still had the love handles. I still had the meds. Lots of meds. Quit drinking. 
Rode my bike every day, played golf every day, hiked and walked 15 miles a day, played golf, rode my bike. And the only way I could do it, keep fucking taking the meds because I was in so much pain. I am 64 going on 65, Matt. That's my age. But I'm reversing that shit. My body right now looks and feels like it did when I was 20 years old, 19 years old. That's This is exactly the weight I was when I was 19. I look at my naked ass in the mirror while I'm doing body rubs and I go, fuck you, dude. Look at you go. You're looking good. And I am. I am. I feel awesome. Really awesome. I've never felt this good in my life. Never. I don't need to drink and I don't need to take drugs. I don't need to do any of that to feel better. I just feel better all the time. Now, if I choose to have a drink, that's a prerogative. And I can do that without any um, <clears throat> repercussion. As I said in the beginning of the broadcast, I started smoking again in uh, December when I got here. But I'm going to quit again soon. It's just temporary. I don't worry about it. I figure if I'm going to smoke, I'm going to enjoy that shit. And when I'm done enjoying it, I'll stop again. I can come and go as I will, as I please. That's my choice. That's why I don't beat anybody up for any of their choices, man. I don't. People make their own choices. You got to own that shit. Own your own shit. You don't have to worry about what my shit is. That's my business. Yes, it does, Michelle. You know, what am I going to do with so many gallons? Oh, well, I'll tell you what. One of my big plans is that uh, as soon as uh, the uh, warm weather comes around, um, Alessandro, I have a plan of building a tiny house with a deck and scoring a tub. And I'm going to fill that tub with aged urine. I'm going to put a... Um, bubble wrap um, uh, thing on top so that it can be heated uh, by natural sunlight and I'm gonna soak my skinny ass in that thing every day I might do it several times a day ha <laughs> ha and the stem cells multiply yes it does Michelle that's the beauty of it and it's seismic it's just like a uh, uh, how you measure uh, like a uh, earthquake, seismic. It multiplies in tens. So when you first pee, you're fresh pee. Okay, it already contains the stem cell enzyme. It contains it, but as it ages, it multiplies, and it just gets more and more and more potent. Now, I got, you know, with these 45 gallons, I'll guarantee you, man, I got stuff that looks like 30 weight motor oil, and I love that part, okay? Because the more darker it gets, the more amber it is, the more rich it is, that is the shit right there. That's the shit. It's like silk. It's like rubbing silk. That's what I do my body rubs with. And man, that shit feels good. It rubs right in. And uh, yeah, you have some age. Should I drink it? Had this conversation. Actually, Monica uh, Shoot just posted um, this morning. She posted another piece about the age urine. And if you talk to the, these are women that I really honor and respect. Um, um, Monica Shoot and Rosalind Hansen are two of my mentors. They have been from the day I met them. That's how I learned more than I ever could imagine. I've read a lot of books on the subject, but these are women of wisdom because they've been practitioners their, most of their life. Uh, Monica's going on over 20 years, and Rosalind's been doing, uh, she's been doing it since she was a child. She got introduced to urine therapy at seven years old by a man named uh, Rama, who was an Indian um, shaman who lived at the neighbor's house that practiced. And she had peeped through the um, the bushes 
And he'd leave her little hints and clues. And as time went on, she just kept getting more knowledge. This shit's powerful, folks. You don't get urine therapy, man. You're just not getting anything. I'll tell you what. You really want to turn your life around in a way that'll fuck you up. Drink your pee. Age your pee. Rub your body with your pee. Bathe in it. Put it in your nose. Do a neti pot. You know, clean your ears, your eyes. Man, you want to open up your senses? You know, fucking rock your world. I'm telling you. <clears throat> I can't explain it in any more simpler terms. This shit will twist your melon. How's mine? I've never been happier. I've never been healthier. Ever. 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 Never. Ever. Shit's for real. I'll drink to that. So I've been kind of tripping here this morning. You may have noticed. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, anybody have any other questions or anything? Because, um, you know, I was just kind of on a roll. I was just channeling. Uh, so if I missed any questions or comments or anything, um, excuse me, you know. But I just felt uh, compelled to... Uh, Bring out uh, as many cartoons as I could. <laughs> uh, I pee on myself at a nudist beach, then roll around uh, like I was Godzilla. <laughs> Good one, Matt. That's awesome. Yeah, pee's glorious. It is. You know, anybody who doesn't get how glorious P is, that it, this was given to us as a natural, healing, curing, loving agent. You want to learn to love yourself, man, I guarantee you, you start drinking your P, you're going to experience self-love like you've never known. Never known. Get past your shit. You know, that's it. The mind will get in the way more than anything. Once you get your mind out of your ass and realize it stinks up there and get with the program, start drinking your pee, your body is going to go, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It will. And people dabble in it. Well, I tried it. You know, I did this. You know, I, well, you know, I did, you know, whatever. I, you know, everybody's got their own ride, their own experience. I can't tell you what's going to work for you. That's up to you. I know what worked for me. This shit worked for me big time. And it continues to work for me. I've never been happier or healthier. I'm living in a dream. I could only imagine this shit before. I'm actualizing it now. This shit's for real. It is happening. Big time. <laughs> Yes, indeed. I love you all so very much. I really appreciate anybody and everyone that's, uh, you know, spent any time hanging out here on uh, Saturday mornings. This is just a free-for-all. I never know where I'm going to go with any of this. I never know. I don't script anything. I just let it roll. That's all. I just, I just enjoy Saturday morning cartoons. Always did. <laughs> you know, watching the Roadrunner and Wiley Coyote and the Waskawi Wabbit and Elmo Fudd, you know. <laughs> you know, the uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle particularly, man. There was some high intelligent cartoons there, man. Rocky and Bullwinkle, Aesop's Fables and Mr. Peabody, you know, <clears throat> Dudley Do-Right. <laughs> you know, there's some pretty crazy characters and all of that really amazing and I just realized and absolutely um, accept the fact that I'm just another cartoon that's why I, that's why I call this Saturday morning cartoons because it is I'm just another cartoon and so thank you you know if you've been hanging you've been watching I hope you enjoyed yourselves I certainly have and unless anybody has any further questions um, Cats are freaking out. <laughs>
They've been outside the door going, you fucker, when are you going to let me in? <laughs> I put them out. It's nice out. You know, they're just little wimps sometimes. It's like, you know, I want to go in. I want to go out. I want to go in, man. They, you know, uh, they're cats. <laughs> they're all good. And uh, Michelle says, drink coffee and pee. Yeah, I drink coffee and pee. That's what I, those are the only two things I really drink, coffee and pee. That's it. That's all I drink. Pretty much. Every day, that's what I drink. It's all good to me. Yeah, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> and Diana, you know, I love you, darling. You know, oh, man. <clears throat> Beavis and Butthead. I actually saw a clip this morning. Somebody sent me um, a, a link uh, to Pea Bottle Man uh, by some guy. And then there was a secondary one where Pea Bottle Man, the uh, video uh, that was made, uh, was being reviewed by Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> it was hilarious. It really was. So, um, yeah, anyway, I, I, I'm feeling complete myself. Um, I, I uh, actually am hoping to get out and play some golf today uh, because we're getting more rain as the uh, day proceeds by uh, forecast. And I want to go play golf. <laughs> I love my little Zen meditation walking out there in nature. I love it. I live for that shit every day. So, I don't see any more questions appearing. I love you all dearly. Thanks for hanging out with me. I wish you all a beautiful, wonderful, marvelous day. Love yourself. Hug yourself. Express yourself. Explore yourself. Expose yourself. Don't hide out. There's no reason for it. Show up. Be accountable. Be the beautiful gift that you are. Do it. Be it. Own it. Keep your peace together. And speaking of that, hey, you know what? This symposium's pretty fucking cool. You know? I had a lot of fun there last year. Met some really remarkable people. Something to keep in mind. You know, if you really want to meet some cool people, uh, some wonderful people that are all doing the communion, uh, hanging out, sharing their peace stories and whatever, hey, go to the symposium. WaterLifeSymposium.com Registration is only 35 bucks for the event. Can't argue with that. It's in Vegas, which is one of the cheapest destination zones there is for rooms, for flights, all that. So, you know, something to consider. September 21, 2, and 3 uh, this year at the Westgate uh, Resort. And again, I remind everybody, if you want to participate in the book, um... Now's the final kind of call because Monday I have to send in all finals. Uh, that includes any comments that people want to submit, which you can do at wedushibambu.com or any donations you'd like to make at um, paypal.me uh, forward slash we do. Um, $25 or more get you a personalized signed copy of um, the Warren Oracles, which I'm excited about. My very first publication and um real quick i got lana love coming up next tuesday andrew visker coming up the week after that kirsten lazur awesome these are really beautiful people man glenn dixon and then monica shoot got some really cool guests coming up on the on the oracles i'm jazzed so have a beautiful wonderful marvelous day and boom Hey, ha ha, you just been loved. Ha ha, ciao for now. <laughs>